and made very soon. We'd cruise along the Milky Way and land upon the moon. To a wonderland of stardust, we'll zoom our way to Mars. My heart would be a fireball, a fireball. Uh, please welcome Dr. Dean O'Neill. Uh, tender hat, and thanks to Robert Zuma and everybody for inviting me, all the organisers, the uh, higher chapter of uh, the Mars Society, well, all the volunteers, and all the tech guys who are making all this possible. So I just want to congratulate them all now. So if we could all learn from each other, and I, I, I've used this analogy a few times, if we're going to go to Mars, we're going to have a colony on Mars, we will have many, many different individuals from many different areas of society. It won't only be scientists, engineers, military personnel, astronauts. It's going to be lawyers, unfortunately. It's going to be uh, <laughs> doctors, nurses, medical professionals. You're going to have architects, you're going to have uh, geologists, you're going to have biologists. I mean, this is, and, and this is really representative of who's in this room at the moment. There's a vast wealth of knowledge in this room, and really it comes, I believe, the big task of trying to promote what you guys do. And I've handed my card out so many times, but, you know, just get, and I just provided one tool for you, and it's a very small tool, it's social media. That is a growing, um, a growing source of information for you personally and it's also a great way to, to promote your stuff. So use social media. I mean it sounds it sounds you know like a very basic thing to be tweeting at a conference. But it actually I mean how many retweets did you get? I mean <laughs> people there you go. So leading me to the uh, the next big part of tonight. Um, and a big part of promoting science of course is to promote it to youngsters because they are the future generation. And I had a wonderful chat with Hero Magnus down here, and she can come up to the podium. Um, she, she actually wrote to Congress, she wrote for us to the President, and, and Hero actually got some replies, not all favorable apparently, but I'm sure you've got them thinking. I'm sure you've got the Congressman going, if a 10 year old's making this much sense, perhaps we should change our mind. So I'd like to welcome. Uh, Hero to the stage, and she's got a little presentation she wants to wants to afford a, a speech she's done, and it's, it's very good, it's very helpful. So, I want to go to Mars. Simple as that. I want to go to Mars. I've known it since I was two. I don't know why, but I feel it is my destiny. My name is Hero Magnus, and I'm 10 years old. I was invited here today because I campaigned for Mars. I delivered letters to members of Congress and the President because I feel that it is my destiny to explore the Red Planet, and I will help that happen. I want to inspire you to inspire others so they can figure out if it's their destiny, too. And there are so many people who want to go that it's in human nature. It's in us to want to go to Mars. And that itself is a reason to go. People want to go to Mars. It might be just a feeling, but it's a feeling in all of us and many others. I have confidence that we will get to that rocky, beautiful planet because that little human feeling, that little human dream, can and will come true if we believe and if we help others believe. And thank you for your time. Well, this is the most unexpected privilege for me to even attend this wonderful forum and to be asked to read this poem that I wrote in the in the early years of World War II is really beyond dream. Now this poem, I was born in 1920, 
and uh, I was a single girl in New York during the early war years. And the world was full of planes at that point, all kinds of excitement about planes in the sky and dreams of going beyond our Earth, I think. But poets are dreamers, you know, and they don't even know where their poems come from. I didn't pay much attention to this particular poem. It was entitled Marsmonaut. The world was aflame with the excitement of, of uh, flying. I think that was the time uh, when we saw flight take real meaning in executing the war. Anyway, this is Mars Monant, and see if you think it has anything significant in it. If it does, it was not because I had any inkling of what reality was. It was a poet's dream, I think. Mars Monant. You will be exiled from the wingless earth identified with stars and flaming suns. Flinging beyond the orbit of man's birth, beyond the arc and fury of man's guns, into silent worlds, the high white places, where rain is myth, absent God's own thunder. You will see prophets, Look into their faces, plumb their realm of agony and wonder. You, in your capsule, alien and alone, plummeting in peril of the skylands, drifting on sun and wind to a dim unknown, probing savage strangeness in the highlands. You will know triumph, terror, and delight, transcending death in deathless cosmic flight. classic sonnet, you know, nobody writes classic sonnets anymore, but this is one of them. And I have maybe 40 copies of this poem, if anybody would like a copy. Uh, Paul has 40 copies. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks everybody, I will go home so inspired, so thrilled, because I know you're carrying the torch and Paul and I won't be around to see it, but you'll do it. You, every one of you, will do it. So, on <laughs> Okay, guys, another episode of uh, Riding Wave with Dave, and I've got a special uh, guest here, uh, Dr. Ian O'Neill, and you Thanks are with the... News. Discovery News, yeah, I'm the okay. space presenter, so space producer for Discovery News. Good, and we're here to let everybody know that we're here in Dayton, Ohio, beautiful facility here at the Marriott Hotel, and it is the uh, Mars Society, 13th Annual International Mars Society. And it is, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and give the audience uh, a rendition of what all has gone on uh, this week? Yeah, basically the uh, Mars Society, for people who don't know, um, they, they are a non-profit organization, international. They do a lot of outreach activities trying to promote the, our future on Mars. I mean, that is pretty much it. That is their basic message, sending humans to Mars. And they've got a lot of respect for robotic missions and whatnot, but ultimately they want to have human habitation. And so really all these people at this 13th um, international conference, so it's this 13th year of the running, um, they are professionals, they're NASA scientists, they're enthusiasts, hobbyists, there are people from industry, people from other non-profit organizations all coming together to network. Um, it's a phenomenal networking opportunity. And there's uh, many, many fantastic talkers. I mean, we just had uh, uh, Carolyn. Um, oh. Next up.
as Carolyn Porter, Porco, and she, as I said, she is her reputation it goes before her. Um, imaging scientist on Voyager, um, Cassini imaging experiment in the 1990s. Early 90s, um, she was actually the character, character consultant on Contact, that's Carl Sagan's um, adaptation of the movie. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. I think it is a, um, I spoke two years ago at the Moore Society meeting and I said then, I'll say it again, it's a lovely gesture of interplanetary graciousness that a bunch of Mars folks would invite a sad person to talk to you. <laughs> it gives me great hope for peace and harmony reigning throughout the solar system and, and change that we can Carolyn Porco. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I'm the master of ceremonies. I'm supposed to. <laughs> well, uh, I've already messed up the scheduling. So uh, hey, it's late <laughs> in the evening, and you probably uh, had a few beverages too. So I've only had right. one. I've only had one. Yeah, okay. I've been very careful, very, very careful. Yeah, so we've just had a wonderful talk by Carolyn Porco and about Saturn. Yeah, that, that was a great presentation. Yeah, and why don't you give an audience? Because I was wasn't able to film on that, but give an audience a rendition right. of what exactly her presentation was all about. Yeah, she's one of the imaging scientists okay. from the. Cassini mission that uh, was launched uh, to Saturn and it's, it just takes phenomenal images and yeah. studies the rings of Saturn, studies all the moons of Saturn and since um, the, uh, the equinox of, uh, of Saturn when the rings were actually edge on with in a direct in the line of sight of the sun, it was a, an unparalleled opportunity for mankind to actually see this event. And actually, the mission the mission name changed. It went from uh, Cassini mission to Cassini Equinox mission, and it looks like it's going to be continuing for another another seven years. I mean, oh, this is wow. going to be an old mission, and it's it's discovering new stuff every day. I mean, wow. as a, as a as a news producer, yep. it's just a gift every single day to to wow. get the, this imagery from uh, from Saturn. Well, it sounds like this whole event has been very well attended and like you say it's been kind of like a who's who of uh, people from all around the world uh, here attending it here in Dayton, Ohio and I'm very happy to be able to come here and cover the event. Uh, what else would you like the audience to know uh, about what's going on? I'm kind of curious because you know our president has uh, come out with uh, a new directive for uh, NASA and stuff like that. What's your take with what his direction is and what he's done because it's kind of all gibberish to me. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult and there's a yep. lot of confusion, not, not only with us but also with uh, with NASA, NASA personnel. I mean I've spoken to a lot of scientists and they're genuinely confused because you know every four years um, you know, the president comes, the president goes, new is, uh, new uh, new guys in Congress come in with different ideas and unfortunately the, the mission of NASA changes Yeah. and we've had, uh, we had ex-NASA administrator Mike Griffin, he came in yesterday and gave a very good talk and he is um, very critical of the current direction of the current administration. Right. Um, I mean, because he kind of started um, getting uh, commercial space involved into, you know, providing contracts for commercial space entities to send stuff into space, um, and they also, and he also really kickstarted the whole constellation program. Of course, that's now being cancelled by the current yeah. administration. So you know, if one uh, one mission starts one during one uh, four-year period, and then the next four years is cancelled, and that's what's causing a lot of confusion, a lot of upset. For me personally. I'm, I'm no politician, but it confuses the hell out of me. I'm really for the science. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence as far as the, the Obama plan because the Constellation program was overrunning. It was very, very expensive. Okay. Um, so something had to be done. Okay. Cancelling it might have been too far, okay. um, but we need to have a manned presence in space. And unfortunately, the US is floundering. The, the shuttle's going to be retired next year. This will have one extra flight. But really, that's the only plan we've got. And in the next five years, we might not have a rocket. And okay. we have to rely on Russia. And I don't think that's a solution. Okay, that, that's a great take. Hey, I'm just kind of curious. Oh, where are you from exactly? Because you got a great accent. I really like it. Great. Stuff. I think the ladies Thank like it too. Much, yeah. So, uh, where, where are you from? I'm originally from Bristol in England, so oh, in the okay. southwest of England. Um, I okay. got my degree and PhD in Wales in Aberystwyth. Um, so good one to try and pronounce. Um, and then I met my wife in Hawaii when I was on a conference and oh, wow. then I moved over here and now I live in LA. And I've lived here for well, permanently the last two years. Oh cool. Well, yeah. welcome to the United States. States Thank you. And Thank listen, much. I know you've had a busy uh, week and you've had a busy day, so I'm going to let you run. Thank you very much Great. for spending time and riding away with Dave. And I look forward to talking to you in the future. Great to speak to you, Dave. Good. Okay, thank you. Take care. That's it, guys. It's a wrap. Thank okay. You. Hey, thank you very much. Ian. No, 